Hi, my name is Devin Feely, and these are the biggest headlines for the week of April 28th. That critical stretch of Highway 1 in Big Sur that was damaged by winter storms is back open to the public on a limited basis, twice a day, once in the morning, and again at night. The public for one hour will be allowed to drive in and then back out of Big Sur. Now, until now, it had only been residents who were allowed in and out. Caltrans is still working on a permanent repair to that road. A tragic story that's developing in North Carolina tonight. Four law enforcement officers are dead after a shootout in East Charlotte. They were serving an arrest warrant for a felon in possession of a gun. And when they got to the house, somebody started shooting at those officers. They fired back and killed the suspect. But there was two other people armed inside of the house and there was a long standoff before they eventually were able to take them in custody. Santa Rosa police arrested a man who's accused of attacking a restaurant worker with a sword. Now, thankfully, the employee was able to run away and wasn't hurt. Police found the man a few hours later and arrested him for felony robbery. These are your primetime headlines at the half hour. Communities across the central U.S. are picking up the pieces after a string of deadly tornadoes. More than 100 tornadoes were reported across six states on Friday alone, with more on Saturday and Sunday. The storms have killed at least five people so far. Crews in Oklahoma are now working around the clock to restore power to those affected areas, but residents say it could be weeks, maybe months before things get back to normal. A Salvation Army campus in San Jose is getting ready for a major makeover. The Salvation Army's Emanuel House currently has 88 shelter beds. After the remodel, that number is going to go up to 112. The county gave the Salvation Army $4 million to put up temporary shelter beds during the remodel, which they expect to take as long as 10 years. An Oakland resident is determined to find out who stole her bees. She tells us that 30,000 bees were stolen from her yard, and she says the incident just makes it more evident that theft in the community has just gone too far. These are tonight's primetime headlines. Students at Columbia University ignored a 2 p.m. deadline to leave their encampment. The university says that they have already started suspending students at the protest. 21 House Democrats sent a letter to Columbia's board today demanding an end to the encampments or that the trustees will step down. More on the local campus protests in our next half hour. Fire destroyed 53 units at in Fremont, leaving the building red tag. The flames broke out just before 6 a.m. at the extra space storage facility. Now, crews were able to knock down those flames within an hour of arriving at the scene and contain the fire to a single building. Still no word on what caused that fire in the first place. Presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. says he is qualified for the ballot in California. He said in a social media post that his campaign gained ballot access to the American Independent Party. California marks the fourth state where Kennedy has officially gained access to the ballot. A new effort to fight California's opioid crisis. Governor Gavin Newsom announced the state will soon have its own version of an overdose reversal drug for nearly half the price. The state is working with a New Jersey pharmaceutical company to buy an over-the-counter nasal spray version of Naloxo. The state will charge $24 for a two-pack, 40% below the current market rate. The state will also provide the drug to first responders and universities for free. William Sonoma will pay more than $3 million after improperly labeling products as made in the USA. According to the Federal Trade Commission, the San Francisco-based company broke a 2020 ban on advertising foreign-made products as American-made. William Sonoma has agreed to a settlement that requires him to pay nearly $3.2 million, the largest penalty ever in a made in the USA case. And maybe the least surprising headline of the night, Taylor Swift's new album, The Tortured Poets Department, is number one on the Billboard 200 Albums chart, selling more than two and a half million units in its first week. It is Swift's biggest first week, week of sales ever. This is her 14th album to reach number one on the Billboard chart. She now ties with Jay-Z. If you're wondering who holds the record, it's the Beatles with 19 albums. In Oakland, two people are in custody after a pursuit involving two different vehicles through city streets. Oakland police say that their helicopter was following a suspected stolen vehicle. Our chopper was over the scene as well. We saw a black SUV speeding past cars near the Oakland airport. Now, at one point, the driver abandoned the SUV, walked through the neighborhood, met up with somebody, and both of them got into a white station wagon and drove off to another neighborhood. That's when police tracked them down and made that arrest. Former President Donald Trump was found in contempt for violating his gag order today as his hush money trial continues in New York City. 
He was fined $9,000 for violating it nine times. And meanwhile, Keith Davidson, an attorney who represented Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougall, took the witness stand for the prosecution. Davidson recounted negotiations in the months leading up to the 2016 election over deals for both of those women. Trump denies claims that he had sexual relations with Daniels or McDougal. Trump has pleaded not guilty to 34 felony counts of falsifying business records. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken is in Israel today urging Hamas to accept the latest ceasefire proposal. But Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's comments could put those talks at risk, saying that Israel will invade Rafah regardless of a ceasefire deal. The Biden administration has pushed Israel not to invade the city in southern Gaza, where more than a million Palestinian civilians are sheltered. A massive fire in Concord took down a vacant building last night. It broke out overnight near the Sunset and East Streets, not far from the Concord BART station. We're told this commercial building was under construction when it caught fire. Firefighters were able to contain it after about two and a half hours. Now, so far, there have been no reported injuries. Rite Aid is set to close three of its Bay Area stores. It is all part of the drug store chain's restructuring plan to close 53 stores nationwide. The stores are located in San Jose, Union City, and Nevada. About 200 stores across the country have already been shuttered. Several major U.S. newspapers, including the San Jose Mercury News, are suing San Francisco-based OpenAI and Microsoft. Now, the lawsuit claims that the companies use millions of copyrighted news articles without permission or payment to train artificial intelligence systems. We, we did reach out to Microsoft, but they declined to comment. OpenAI told us it is actively having conversations with news organizations to talk about concerns and solutions. Oakland City Council approved the contract of new police chief Floyd Mitchell. Mitchell is expected to receive $365,000 a year. He's on a three-year contract that starts in June. Mitchell said that he would bring change to the city when Mayor Shang Tao introduced him last month. A car, a car fire on the Bay Bridge this morning shut down the westbound lanes to San Francisco. Now, thankfully, the driver of this SUV was able to escape safely with no injuries. All lanes on the Bay Bridge reopened by noon. The Oakland Fire Department is investigating the cause of that fire. Another round of layoffs announced at Tesla the Chronicle reports that it involves a supercharger team and two executives. Around 500 employees will be let go, including the senior director of the supercharger division and new vehicles program. Now, this comes after Tesla announced plans to lay off around 14,000 workers, including 2,700 in the Bay Area. Those layoffs will begin June 14th. In San Jose, a man is accused of running a brothel is in custody. Police say they received a tip about a home on North 16th Street. During their investigation, police say they found two women who were victims of human trafficking at that home. The suspect has been booked on pimping charges. The judge and former President Donald Trump's New York hush money trial fined him $9,000 for violating his gag order nine times. Now, meanwhile, Keith Davidson, an attorney who represented Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougal, took the stand for the prosecution. Trump denies claims that he had sexual relations with either woman. He's pled not guilty to 34 counts of falsifying business records. Starting tomorrow, commuters can start taking the ferry again between Sausalito and San Francisco. Golden Gate Ferry Service was suspended on the 19th after damage was spotted on one of the four piles of the Sausalito Pier but repairs have been completed and that pier has been declared safe. Evan Lowe is inched ahead of Joe Zimini and in the closely watched recount for District 16, congressional seat that's held by Anna Eshoo. Lowe and Zimidian had tied for second place before a recount discovered some previously uncounted ballots, meaning that Lowe will face off against former San Jose Mayor Sam Licardo in November. Now Lowe won the recount by five votes, knocking Semidian off the ballot. It was going to be a three-way three race in November, but a former campaign staffer for LaCarta requested the recounts in both Santa Clara and San Mateo County. San Mateo County allowed seven new challenge ballots to count, which allowed Lowe to pick up an extra vote. Semidian sent out a statement conceding and congratulating Lowe and LaCarta. A major crackdown on parking violations that is underway against drivers in San Francisco as part of the city's Vision Zero pledge to try and eliminate traffic deaths starting this week. More officers will be deployed around the city to ramp up enforcement against unsafe parking violations. 
The city says that it plans to crack down especially on violations where cars block sidewalks, bike lanes, and spaces near crosswalks and stop signs. And Oakland's newest professional sports team, the Oakland Ballers, has officially found its new home at Raymondi Park in West Oakland. After the city council gave the team permission to build stands and make improvements around the park, the team has already been working on the field. The new turf is almost finished. In all, the Ballers will invest about $1.6 million in park renovations. And this is what it's going to eventually look like. The team released some renderings of what their future 4,000-seat stadium. The Ballers play in the Pioneer League. It dates back to 1939. The home opener is set for June. Tickets go on sale this coming Monday. These are your primetime headlines at the half hour. This year's May Day demonstrations across the Bay Area looked a little different than we're used to. From Oakland to San Francisco to San Jose, the usual pro-labor demonstrations that usually happen on May 1st were instead an opportunity for protesters to show their support for the Palestinian people. Mandatory service fees in restaurants are, going, are soon going to be illegal under a new state law. But industry experts say it may not result in cheaper bills, as restaurants will likely make up the shortfall by increasing prices. The ban is set to take effect in July. The CDC is warning about an E. coli outbreak linked to tainted organic walnuts produced in California, specifically from Gibson Farms in Hollister. Now, so far, health officials say a dozen people have already been infected in the state. The company recalled its organic light halves and pieces shelled walnuts last week. The CDC says that stores that sold those walnuts should notify customers about the recall. People who bought the products are asked to throw them out. Major crackdown on parking violations are now underway against drivers in San Francisco as part of the city's Vision Zero pledge to try and eliminate traffic deaths. Starting this week, more officers will be deployed around the city to ramp up enforcement against unsafe parking violations. The city says it plans to crack down especially on violations where cars block sidewalks, bike lanes, and spaces near crosswalks and stop signs. A judge has stopped the city of Fremont from evicting people living in motel rooms under the Winter Relief Program. Originally, the plan was for them to only be in those rooms through April. Residents say the city hasn't provided them with any low income or temporary housing to go to after those evictions, meaning that if the evictions go through as planned, They'll be right back out on the street. The city has until tomorrow at noon to respond to the court order. And the Biden administration's latest student loan forgiveness plan could benefit people who attend two art institutes in the Bay Area. It applies to students who went to the Art Institute of California in San Francisco or Silicon Valley between 2004 and 2017. The Department of Education found the schools misled prospective students about graduates' job rates and average salaries. These student loan cancellations are just the latest from the Biden administration ahead of the 2024 election. This year's May Day demonstrations across the Bay Area looked a little different than we're used to. From Oakland to San Francisco to San Jose, the usual pro-labor demonstrations that usually happen on May 1st were also opportunities for protesters to show their support for the Palestinian people. A new AI search tool on the nonpartisan and nonprofit news outlet CalMatters allows users to track bills, votes, and even every word that's spoken of the California Capitol. CalMatters CEO, co founder David Lesher, says the new tool is a game changer and the increased transparency will change the decision making process for some state lawmakers. The CDC is warning about an E. coli outbreak linked to tainted organic walnuts produced in California, specifically from Gibson Farms in Hollister. Now, so far, health officials say that more than a dozen people have already been infected in the state. The company recalled its organic light halves and pieces shelled walnuts last week. The CDC says that stores that sold those walnuts should notify customers about the recall. And people that bought the products are asked to just throw them out. These are tonight's primetime headlines. A gun battle played out this morning near Bishop O'Dowd High School in Oakland. We spoke to a man who said that his wife and daughter were trapped inside of an SUV which flipped on its side. They had been driving to school around 7.30 a.m. when they were caught right in the middle of two cars with people shooting at each other. He says that one of the vehicles T-boned his wife before taking yeah, off in another car. This is why we left. Um, this kind of stuff happens. It doesn't matter the time of day. People are just going about their business, just wreaking havoc on other people's lives. 
Administrators at the high school said that they were in communication with the police department and that the assessment of officers was the campus wasn't in any danger and classes could continue. In San Francisco, a fire damaged an historic building in the city's Knob Hill neighborhood. Just take a look, you can see flames shooting out of the three-story building near the corner of Jackson and Leavenworth Streets. The fire broke out around 8.30 this morning. Firefighters managed to keep the flames from spreading to neighboring buildings. That building is more than 100 years old. There is no word on the cause of that fire. And more than half of the State Farm Home Insurance policyholders living in Orinda are set to lose their coverage soon. That comes out to about 1,700 policies, which is the most of any zip code in the state. It's the latest move from insurance companies trying to reduce or completely get rid of business in California as climate change increases the risk of wildfires. Honestly, it was not a shock because it's been a known issue. Uh, the, and also our premiums and going up like 30 to 60% a year for about five years. I got a list of people that could potentially insure me. I was on Nextdoor on Facebook following all the leads, especially after the State Farm here in Orinda hit pretty hard. Uh, people were definitely looking for carriers, but nothing panned out. Now, some say they have looked into the fair plan created by the state, but they have found that it will not even begin to cover the cost of rebuilding their homes in the case of a disaster. The California Fair Plan is known as the state's insurer of last resort, but it is known to be expensive and rates continue to go up. These are your primetime headlines at the half hour. Another pro-Palestinian encampment has popped up at a Bay Area college. University of San Francisco joins UC Berkeley, Stanford, and many more across the country in calling for an end to the violence in Gaza and for the school to divest of any connections to the Israeli government. The captain of a scuba boat that caught fire and killed 34 people, including several victims from the Bay Area, has just been sentenced to four years in prison for neglect as a ship officer. The fire was the deadliest marine disaster in recent U.S. history. It happened nearly five years ago off the coast of Santa Barbara. Captain Jerry Boylan's sentencing could be a final step in a prosecution that's lasted years and frustrated many of the victims' families, but his appeal is still ongoing. <clears throat> The Department of Justice delivering their final arguments today and tomorrow in a landmark antitrust lawsuit against the search giant Google. The DOJ argues that Google had monopolized the search engine market through a web of contracts with various software platforms that made Google the default search engine. Google argues that consumers just chose Google because it's a superior product. The court is expected to reach their final decision later this year. Police in Livermore need help finding this man, 33-year-old Yunston Vasquez from Oakland. Investigators say he shot and killed a man and a woman inside of a hotel room on Saturday at the La Quinta Inn on South Front Road. They believe that he knew one of those victims. He is considered armed and dangerous. If you see him, call Livermore Police. Today is the deadline for California college students to apply for state financial aid. State lawmakers recently voted to push the application deadline from April 2nd to May 2nd for Cal Grants and other state aid programs. The change was made due to huge problems with the rollout of the federal forms used to calculate scholarship and loan amounts. That's led to schools receiving inaccurate information about student eligibility. In San Francisco, a fire damaged an historic building in the city's Knob Hill neighborhood. Take a look. You can see the flames shooting out of this three-story building near the corner of Jackson and Leavenworth Streets. The fire broke out around 8.30 this morning. Firefighters managed to keep the flames from spreading to neighboring buildings. The building's more than 100 years old. There is no word on what caused that fire in the first place. Hey, these are your primetime headlines at the half hour. Another pro-Palestinian encampment has popped up at a Bay Area college. San Francisco State now joins UC Berkeley and Stanford and many more all across the country in calling for an end to the violence in Gaza and for the school to divest of any connections to the Israeli government. A Southern California company has been has to pay more than a million dollars to its customers because of these goofy looking face masks. Razor is accused of selling fraudulent N95 COVID mass during the COVID pandemic. The FTC says that Razor and its affiliates marketed the Zephyr mask as an N95 without actually submitting it to federal agencies for their testing or certification. The FTC has ordered the video game accessory company to pay one, a $100,000 fine as well. 
A rattlesnake warning from the East Bay Regional Parks District today. The agency says the snakes are emerging from their winter hibernation and becoming more active as the weather warms up. And several hikers have reported spotting them recently. These are tonight's primetime headlines. That standoff in Solano County is finally over. The suspect pulled from the car after hours. And we have the latest information, including the traffic impact, coming up after the rest of your headlines. About 100,000 American immigrants with DACA status will soon be eligible for health care under the Affordable Care Act. That is thanks to a new policy enacted by the Biden administration. Right now, undocumented immigrants who came to the U.S. as children are legally allowed to live and work in the country. But starting in November, thousands will also be able to enroll in certain health care plans. This is part of the Biden administration's latest effort to codify DACA into regulatory policy, an effort that has stalled in Congress. Waymo has announced that it will start testing driverless cars on streets in the peninsula in the coming weeks. The Google-owned company says it is the first step to expanding its service to all the way to Sunnyvale. The pilot program will only give rides to Waymo employees first between San Francisco down to the border of San Mateo and Burlington. Freeways are off limits for now. There has been some pushback to the expansion of driverless car testing in the Bay Area after a string of safety incidents involving crews. These are your primetime headlines at the half hour. California public transit officials are asking Governor Newsom to lift a $2.4 billion freeze on state transit investments that were approved last year. Officials say that service restoration projects and future funding could be affected if that freeze isn't lifted. And air quality regulators in the Bay Area say that Tesla has emitted thousands of tons of illegal air pollution from its Fremont plant. This really is nothing new for Tesla. They have racked up 112 air quality violations since 2019. Now, the regulators are seeking an abatement order that would force the company to make changes. Former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi was one of 17 recipients of the Medal of Freedom today at the White House. That is the nation's highest form of honoring civilians. Other recipients at today's ceremony include former President Al Gore, Vice President Al Gore, civil rights activist Clarence Jones, and Oscar-winning actress Michelle Yeoh. Thanks for watching. You can get the latest headlines and weather over on PIX+. Plus. And remember to like and click the button on the bottom left of your screen to subscribe for the biggest Bay Area news.